how the room feels about what's going on that when it comes to the per the person who's the reason that we're focused on all the things that we're doing but we're busy talking to the room that is only the environment around that person and what they have going on when it comes to advocacy when it comes to standing up for people when it comes to the work that we do as advocates or people who simply want to be there for people don't don't ever forget the reason that we're here doing everything that we're trying to do what's up guys it's your boy juice jones back with another episode of housekeeping and what do you guys know about advocacy and when i say advocacy i don't mean something you're paid for i don't mean something that's a position on indeed.com or any of these other you know <clears throat> websites when i say advocacy when someone tells you hey stand up for me or someone says i feel i'm not supported and you decide to either be that person's support or be that person's voice in the room that they may not be able to speak for themselves or they may need a second voice that reinforces what their concerns are how do you guys think about advocacy so the reason i ask this question is recently <coughs> partner got a surgery um been together a little bit under four years or so and they deal with a lot of different things fibromyalgia endometriosis the list goes on so within this time and us getting closer I came to realize that this person may need someone in their corner to voice when it's time to say yes, voice when it's time to say no, or just stand in the back and exist. But there doesn't always have to be a decision that is made. So the reason advocacy is important to this story is the folks who came with us, they were great moral support and great emotional support. But I saw a couple of holes in terms of how people were operating. And I came to realize there's so much more everyone around us, myself included, could do so much better. A lot of folks aren't coming with a list of, hey, what should my concerns be? When people think, you know, this person needs to be healthy or we want the best for people, I think a lot of us associate the best for someone is a decision has been made. I think when people think about the best for someone, they think not only has the decision been made, but the decision that we decided to make was the right decision in that moment. And when it comes to that, I disagree by a long shot. Now, the reason I disagree and the reason I know this isn't the case is because before coming up to the surgery that we sat through last week, I've had all the hard conversations. And when I say all the hard conversations, I don't think about, you know, what are your concerns that's in front of you right now? I think about the what ifs. Hey, if this goes wrong, how would you like that to be handled? Um, if those if this goes right, how would you like that to be handled? Um, let's say you're asleep under the knife and someone comes to me about a concern because I am your primary voice of, hey, we have to do this. Do we have your permission or not? How would you like me to handle that? And the reason I say this is because when it comes to people that have known you for a long time, whether they be longtime friends, longtime parents and longtime parents sound weird, but there is a system where people are sometimes consistently going in and out of people lives. We assume as being the long term or the long time relationship, we know what's best for the person. But a lot of us aren't meeting the people where they are now in terms of their traumatic experience, in terms of their great experience and the things that they've learned to love that are no longer who they used to be. Or in terms of if I want to live a life that is happy, these are certain things that I don't want people to change, especially when either we're close to the finish line or there's a certain complication and it's don't move forward with whatever the suggestion is until I wake up and I have an opinion and I think about what we should do with my body going forward, which that's the point and the purpose. It is this person's body and this person's autonomy. And, you know, as a family and as a friend, a lot of us tend to think with our hearts and we just want to get this over with. But Sometimes when it comes to the person's position, it's not simply getting it over with. It is the concern of I have to live with this body and the body I'm given. I'd like to have an opinion on it if I have the freedom to do so. And we shouldn't be in such a rush to get to the finish line or make a decision or figure out what's next. 
when it comes to advocacy, especially when it comes to a surgery, especially when it comes to just showing up for someone, before being super excited for the results or being super excited for what has been accomplished and everyone showing up, when the main focus is the person, the first question you have to ask is, hey, how do you feel? Talking to the person, hey, are you okay with the results of what has happened? You know, hey, if these aren't the results and there are setbacks, you know, moving forward, what do we as the people that are supporting you need to keep in mind and not we as the people that are making this, the decisions for you when you're not able to speak? Now, when it comes to advocacy, there are four rules that I use and I keep in mind when it comes to being an advocate. Rule number one, identify the cause. So when identifying the cause for this situation, first things I think about is we do the follow up with the doctor before you go into surgery or before it's time for you to go under the knife and you know everyone comes, they put eyes on you, they make sure, hey, the staff you're working with is solid and we'll be waiting in the waiting room. What we gotta think of is, was there something else that was suggested that either veers away from the plan or concern of maybe there's another organ that's going to be affected and there's going to be a lifetime decision of, hey, if we discover so-and-so and so-and-so, we may have to remove so-and-so. And you make it clear to your partner or the person that you're advocating in in that situation, hey, this wasn't what they said in the meeting that we attended. Are you okay with, hey, if worse comes to worse and they have to remove this, are you going to be okay with this particular thing? missing no longer being there and then hey a question that's just as good hey is there gonna have to be medication for the fact that this particular thing is missing now that this person's gonna have to take that is already dealing with all these things because quality of life sometimes isn't about hey can i walk or can i run sometimes it's how many medications am i gonna have to take depending on the situation that i'm in and what is my capacity as a person to have to take so many things and keep track of when to take things and keep track of the frustration of did I forget or keep track of the frustration of did I get my refill or keep track of the frustration of, hey, when you don't have your refill for the thing that you need because you forgot it because there's so much going on in your life, what does that affect and what does my life look like when I forget those things because I'm so busy as a person that has so many things going on? Rule number two, educate yourself. When it comes to advocating for someone, when it comes to advocating for something, we can't just be drivers of passion. You have to be drivers of, all right, now that I'm passionate and I feel strongly about this thing, am I reaching out to people to get the proper education? Am I reaching out to the folks that go through it as to what their experience is that adds on to the passion? Am I reaching out to the people that treat it? Hey. What should I be concerned with in your walk of life or what you've worked on? What have you come across when it comes to me as a person that's there for you? How can I be there for you for this thing that you didn't have a choice about? And what do you expect from the people that are in your life that have your back that are advocating for you? It, it sounds simple and it sounds easy, but it's very easy to educate yourself to the point that you have an assumption that you have a full understanding of what the thing is. And unless you experience it, especially as someone that's just advocating for a purpose or for a person, you only have 40% of the picture until you either experience it yourself or you're around it so long that you have a better grasp of how this concept or this thing actually works and how it affects the person and what the cause and effects of those things are. Because sometimes we get so wrapped up into the, do I have this person's back and am I doing the right things that we miss the, oh, I could see how my education on something becomes miseducation because I started to make assumptions along the way instead of just taking it in, absorbing the information and observing what I see in front of me or what I'm dealing with and how to approach that. Number three, engage and mobilize. So when it comes to engage and mobilize and the reason that those things are tied in and intertwined when it comes to the work that I do as an advocate, I think to myself, all right, now that there's been enough verbiage and there's been enough education, am I handling the thing that we're looking to either fix or support or figure out and are we putting actions to the promises when you advocate for something or someone there's usually a public promise somewhere out there like 
simply, hey, we're looking to get you therapy. That'd be a great example of the work that I do when it comes to Get Home Safe, right? Uh, we're looking to hook you up with certain folks that do wellness events. All right, cool. I have people on the wellness roster or folks who I do work with that are in the wellness community when it comes to sound bowls, when it comes to yoga, and when it comes to... <laughs> Sound bowls, yoga. Is there anything else that we're doing right now? Sound bowl, meditation, yoga. Oh, meditation in general. And those are like the top three right now for now. And outside of art therapy, we haven't gotten there in terms of the therapeutic, the therapeutic process of art itself and how it could be used with therapy. But those are two separate things that we've put together and that we're working on right now. The action to the community on that one is, hey, we promise to give you these things, these samples. Did you like what you see there? Are you going to get it for yourself now that you've had this example of what the thing does or the purpose of what it's looking to do or what that does for you? Hey, boom. Does that experience bring things in? Another example, actually, of something therapeutic that we've recently been working on, the concept when it comes to the In My Shoes. People telling their stories, people cleaning sneakers as they're telling their stories, people having a filter between the moment and everything that happened and them trying to be present and not too emotional about what has happened while still protecting the privacy of the story and the person, but still making space for them to be honest about what's going on. That's the public promise. Hey, you come through, you come on in my sneakers, clean the sneakers, tell your story, face isn't shown. If you want to expose yourself to the public and let folks know you are, that's up to you with too many hints. But if you don't want to, cool, we got you also in the way that it's executed, right? Then after that, everybody goes about their business and they keep it moving. But when it comes to the advocacy thing, you still got to bring it back to, did you accomplish what you have promised when it comes to the purpose, the thing, or what's going on? And then number four, taking action within the advocacy. So taking action within the advocacy isn't just, well, I do this, this, and this, this. That's how I have proof that I'm an advocate. No, it's meaningful. It's where is your impact felt? So in terms of me and the story that I told that I opened up with earlier when I was there for my partner, the concern and the taking action within the advocacy was making sure, hey, once they went to go get the surgery, I didn't leave the waiting room where everybody was there for about eight hours need some food snacks now i'm good i'm chilling because the focus is if something goes wrong be there for the partner the focus is hey if the surgery is going over the time that it was allotted before which was supposed to be three hours and it turned into like six and a half hours all right everything's obviously not going well so you have to be prepared in case the doctor comes out with bad news or something just went awry but the surgery went well you know that's just the assumptions and where we go from there and then even within the, a lot of time and everything else, once the person comes out of the surgery, the most important thing, whether you've gotten good news, bad news, or any news that, you know, could be either above me now from the point of an advocate or someone that's standing in for someone in their experience and what's going on is, and this is the most important part, got to get back to the purpose. Is the person okay? Before giving them bad news, before giving them good news, before anything else that's a delivery on what's going on, we all just came out of surgery. You were in the surgery, we're here supporting the surgery, and you, you mainly the person in the surgery or what's going on or what we're standing for. Not all news needs to be heard right now. Deliver the person back to the house. Make sure they're okay. Do we have the space for them to move around with no issue? Do we need to be more patient with how they're moving around? Should we have an assumption that their body is going to be sore for hours, days, weeks that they may not have thought was going to be the case when it comes to the doctors and who they've treated and the patient now being in the care of their loved ones, which is me and the family that's come through? And hey, did we prepare everything that we can outside of just the apartment being clean, outside of the spaces being free for them to move around, wiping things down, keeping everything as cleanly as possible, going back and forth, delivering food, knowing what food they can't have right now, especially after coming out of surgery. Keeping in mind that like, hey, they may want to drink something, but even though their throat is dry, we got to be careful of how much liquid we're giving them. And they have to take their time as they're getting back to who they were. And you have so many things that are adjusting within the body from the surgery. And the reason I bring this up, especially when it comes to advocacy, is there was news that was delivered that it was surprising. Yeah, but like it didn't need to be said as soon as everything was done. There was a concern that the news that we got needed to be discussed right then as soon as the person was done. And I said, no, no, not at all. You're now putting the cart in front of the horse. The horse is the person that has gone through the experience. And especially after having all these redundant experiences, hey, are you making space for the person to have a moment 
to be okay after the surgery? And are you making space that if there is news that isn't the greatest news ever for them to embrace the news and not have to publicly do it in front of people, do it in front of loved ones? Sometimes you have to give people an opportunity to be in the privacy of their home away from even the people that love them to have their moment privately because even when it comes to loved ones and the people that are closest to you, sometimes they are public when it comes to something that you're going through because you don't you don't want to hear a new opinion. You don't want to hear a new course of action. You don't want to hear, well, this is what we need to do and this is what's gone bad and this is why. No, we're not trying to... Um, We're not trying to Sherlock Holmes the whole situation. In terms of what we're trying to do, we're just trying to... We don't get to find the answers for everything that's going on as an advocate. We get to pay attention, understand when it's time for information to be dropped or introduced to the subject or what's going on, and understand that as an advocate or someone who has someone's back or someone that's taking care of someone, whether they're a loved one or associate, that sometimes there is a proper time and a proper place for everything that's going on and understand that you as an advocate, you're not allowed to let your emotions get the best of you, even if you've been a part of that person's experience way longer than the person who may have just gone there. You still have to keep the main the main. And a lot of us miss that. A lot of us are quick to be sad or quick to want to know how the room is feeling instead of focusing on the person that's actually going through it and understand that the room doesn't matter right now until that person says, okay, let's hear about what's going on with the room because they are the person that's going through it. When it comes to people's struggles, especially in society, when it comes to depression, anxiety, and everything else, there's a lot of people that are quick to make things about the room. And sometimes you have to understand the room feels some type of way because of the person's experience. I'm not saying that we don't have to acknowledge how the room feels, but there's two separate things that's lost in the process of what's going on when someone is trying to advocate or stand up for someone or be them for there. Are you keeping the focus on the person and their experience and what's going on? Are you keeping the focus on the subject and what we're trying to change and what that impact looks like and really affecting it and keeping track of the effect and the impact that we're having? Or are we focused on how people are reacting to what's going on, to what people are doing? And are we doing everything that we can to make sure it's not too bad of a reaction? Or we're getting we're getting so caught up in how the room feels about what's going on that when it comes to the, per the person who's the reason that we're focused on all the things that we're doing, but we're busy talking to the room that is only the environment around that person and what they have going on. When it comes to advocacy, when it comes to standing up for people, when it comes to the work that we do as advocates or people who simply want to be there for people, don't don't ever forget the reason that we're here doing everything that we're trying to do. This reason right here, this is the reason that we're concerned. This reason right here, this is the reason that we'd like to find a solution, but we don't need to do it right now. The purpose of the work that we do as advocates or as people that care about others or people that want better for others Sure, it's to put them in positions and working on getting the answers and asking the questions, but we don't have to ask it right now. First, you, you start with, hey, are you okay? Glad everything went well. Welcome home. Whether things went well or they didn't went well, we're still here for you. And then we could work through everything else. Then we could get back to what well, we discovered this, this, and this that we didn't know. Cool, we know that discovery. We don't have to discuss it within the first couple of minutes that the person sees their family. You want to know why? Family's going to be there regardless. It's not the same for everybody, but that's what I saw. And when you understand that these people are going to be here through thick and through thin, don't be in a rush to be sad as a group. Because sometimes what that does is you take away from the person who needs to have a moment to feel what's going on because instead of them going through what they're going through or dealing with it and feeling supported, you now bury their feelings. You bury their feelings from feelings from here, feelings from here, feelings from here. Those aren't their feelings. Advocacy isn't easy. 
being there for someone isn't easy. But it's a choice that you have made. And everything comes with a price. So this has been another episode of Housekeeping. I hope this advice helps folks uh, in terms of the top four things that I think about when it comes to advocacy or being there for someone or anything else like that. And uh, like, subscribe, share. Appreciate y'all that pulled up. Uh, hopefully this helps someone that's not me or outside of me or helps someone who's beside me or working with me or concerned about, you know, how are the things that we're doing. It's your boy Juice Jones, again, from Get Home Safe. Appreciate everyone who's uh, been supporting us. Oh, also, you know, welcome new 7,000 subscribers. Uh, appreciate you guys appreciating the work. Definitely looking forward to what we bring to life. And this has been another episode of Housekeeping. Peace.